So one of the hardest things I think that, that there is to do in an analysis course is to really wrestle, as we're going to do today, with the definition of what it means for a sequence of numbers to converge to a limit. Uh, this is the first time we're really meeting a calculus topic head on in our course. And our course is supposed to be about unpacking the foundations of calculus, right? Um, so this is a big deal, uh, which means I don't want to rush through it. Um, so let's talk about this first pair of definitions. First of all, what it means for a sequence to converge to a limit L. Um, and then secondly, what it means if a sequence does not converge to that limit L. Uh, and before we get to that, um, I just want to make the point that when we write this negation of this definition, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the limit doesn't exist. Right? It just means that the limit could exist, but the limit for sure is not equal to L. Right? So we're being very specific in this initial run through to say up front, what is the number that we think that this sequence converges to? Uh, and so we're never going to do the thing, at least not yet, uh, that you did in calculus two, where you would look at something and just be able to say, yes, this converges, or no, this does not converge, without knowing what it converges to. Uh, we can't do that just yet, uh, but we might in, in a little while. So let's at least get started with unpacking that original definition. If the sequence Sn converges to the limit L, uh, then what does that mean? How do you unpack that definition, starting with symbols? There's the symbolic unpacking of this definition. For all epsilons greater than 0, and any time I say that phrase, there's that little parenthetical that I like to put in, no matter how small. So however small we pick this epsilon, as long as it's still positive, there exists a natural number n such that every little n which is bigger than that n will satisfy that the nth term of that sequence is within an epsilon distance of L. Okay, remember, whenever you see the absolute value of a difference, like absolute value of something minus something, as we have written, interpret that as a distance. That was one of the conceptual um, features of our previous packet. Right? When we're thinking about the, the whole point of us using absolute value in analysis is because it's our surrogate for distance on the real number line. So this is saying that however close we want our sequence to get to its limit, the sequence will eventually, after the, nth, after the capital nth term, it will get there and it will stay there. It will stay within that epsilon. I heard this group use the word bandwidth. I like that word. That's very suggestive, right? That there's an epsilon band around the limit, and the sequence will eventually get into that band and never leave. So coming to that notion of bandwidth, when we think about the definition of convergence, um, the idea is that Whatever the limit of my sequence is, so let's take a moment real quickly and just look at this picture. Um, here I've just graphed a sequence. Um, and you can see the, the values of, of y over here on the y-axis. And n, the, the nth term of the sequence, is what's the, on the horizontal. So based on the picture, what number l does it look like this sequence is converging to? Yeah, looking at the numbers on the y-axis here, it sure looks like 0 is the y value that these sequence values are settling upon. Um, and so what that should mean is if I dial in my limit to, to be 0 here, it means that however small I want to choose my epsilon, so here the value of epsilon is, is captured in this number over here on the left. So if I pick an epsilon of, let's say, 0, 0.0, ah, I should probably do this at the computer. So if I pick an epsilon of 0 0.05, then what that sets up for me is this bandwidth that that group was talking about. So here's my epsilon, 0 0.05. That's what we would call the radius of this interval around 0, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, right? So this little band here has a, a half width a radius of 0 0.05. And if this sequence really does converge to 0, then that should mean that there exists a capital N, a natural number, capital N, such that for all n past capital N, we have that the absolute value of the nth term minus my limit, and my limit here is supposed to be 0, is less than epsilon. And here my epsilon is 0 0.05. OK, so for this value of epsilon, my question is, what is capital N? How do you know it's 3, Matt? Exactly. So the meaning of this capital N is that this is the last term that might be outside of the epsilon band. Right? So the first term of this sequence happens to be inside. The second term is outside. The third term also looks like it's outside. But once I reach the fourth term, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh, and so on, 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 and so on 
that all those remaining terms are within that epsilon distance of the number zero. So pictorially, capital N has that meaning, right? that it's the last term which might be outside of the band, n equals 3. Well, I want to modify that just a little bit. Does anybody see how? So we just really should move our n from 3 to 4 because we need greater than or equal to. In other words, we also need the nth term, capital Nth term, to be a part of that. So here's my capital N equals 4, right? So starting with the fourth term, every single term of the sequence is within 0 0.05 of the number 0. Okay. So it's a give and take because epsilon, remember, in our definition, what values of epsilon does this need to work for? It needs to work for all epsilon, no matter how small, right? So, so far, what we found is that if we pick epsilon to be 0 0.05, then we can find a capital N for which the rest of this definition is satisfied. But it started with us picking 0 0.05, which was arbitrary. So we still need to be able, if I pick a different epsilon, to find possibly a different N for which this conclusion still holds, right? If convergence is actually true for this sequence. So... What do you expect would happen if I pick a smaller value for epsilon? What's going to happen to our n? Right. The closer that we need to get to our limit, the further out in the sequence we might have to go before we get that close. Right? So if I pick a smaller epsilon, I can expect, probably, that we're going to have to choose a larger value for n. So let's just dial in a smaller epsilon right here. Let's say I pick epsilon 0 0.02. If I pick 0 0.02 for epsilon, uh, now what does it look like capital N should be? Seven. So right, going out to the seventh term, N equals seven. Once I cross to the seventh term, all of the remaining terms in the sequence are within this epsilon distance of the number zero. So that's the essence of the definition, at least pictorially, that's what the definition does for us that however small I pick my epsilon, I can find some capital N some nth term of the sequence such that all remaining terms after that n are within that epsilon bandwidth of my limit. Okay. So that's the definition. And the goal of, of this first portion of our activity is to get some practice using that definition. Um, and also, get some practice using the anti-definition, right? the, the opposite of what's there. Uh, so before we wrap up today, um, let's get the opposite written down here. If the sequence does not converge to L, and remember, that doesn't mean that the limit might not exist. It just means that whatever L is is not <laughs> the limit of the sequence. Um, how do we negate that statement to say what it means for that sequence not to converge to L? All right, so there exists an epsilon greater than zero, such that for all capital Ns, uh -huh. There exists a little n. Uh huh. Such that. Greater than or equal to epsilon. Great. So this is why we did all of that work at the beginning of the semester, thinking about quantifiers and negations and how to twist around a conditional or a quantified statement into its negation. Right? Um, because this now is the negation. This is what it means for a sequence not to converge to L. It says that there is some epsilon that has the property that no matter how far out we try to go in the sequence, we can find an element past that point which is outside of the epsilon band. Uh, so in question two on the group assignment, um, I ask you to grapple with the following sequence. I'm going to load it back up here. Uh, let's save this one first and load up this one. So here I ask you to work with a sequence minus one to the n, okay, which is just an alternating sequence between plus and minus one, right, depending on the parity of the number n. Um, and so the question is, if I claim that this sequence converges to 0, how can you prove me wrong using that definition that we just wrote? What do you think? Using that definition, uh, let's look at it one more time and think about what the burden of proof is. If I want to use the negation, oops. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if we're going to establish that this statement here in red is true, then we can produce an epsilon, right? We can prove an existential claim by actually demonstrating a specific epsilon that has the property that the rest of the stuff is true, right? Find me an epsilon such that no matter how far out I go in the sequence, there's a point in the sequence past that point which is outside the epsilon band. So not every epsilon that we pick is going to work here. Um, can you think of an example of an epsilon that doesn't work? Uh, well, I guess what I mean is an example of an epsilon for which it's not going to be sufficient uh, to prove that the sequence doesn't converge. Let's suppose that this is what my epsilon band looks like. Here's an epsilon band centered at 0. Maybe I'll actually make it even bigger. Let's go to 1.5. If epsilon is equal to 1.5, then is it true that there exists an n, exists a point in the sequence such that everything past that point, such that, sorry, such that we can find something past that point outside of the epsilon band? No, for this epsilon, in fact, all the terms are within this epsilon band of 0. So 1.5 is not good, but someone, I heard a minute ago, somebody said 0.5, 1 half. So let's suppose that this is our epsilon band. Why is this value of epsilon sufficient to prove that the sequence doesn't converge to 0? Um, for this epsilon, uh oh So choosing epsilon equals 1 half, we can justify that no matter what capital N I pick, so let's suppose that I pick capital N equals 7 or something like that, there exists a little n past that point such that um, the nth term of the sequence is outside of that epsilon band around 0. So here's an example of an n, n equals h, <laughs> such that it's greater than capital N, and that term of the sequence is actually outside of the epsilon band, for the case epsilon equals 0.5. So it's enough, when you're proving that a sequence doesn't converge, it's enough to find a specific epsilon that falsifies that definition. Right? But if we're trying to show it does converge, then we shouldn't be using a specific epsilon because the definition for convergence needs to work for all epsilons, no matter how small.